The Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. If a body meets a body coming through the old-fashioned, need a body... It, it should be coming through the rye. I prefer old fashions. Uh, that's my doorstep you're on. I know. You like my doorstep? Oh, I think it's a very nice doorstep. Well, thanks. Are you collecting doorsteps or merely homesteading them? Well, my idea was to wait until you got here and then go in with you. That's a very nice idea. To match my doorstep, I suppose. Uh, will you come in? Uh-huh. There. Hmm. <laughs> You have a couple of nice ideas. Uh, th that is, uh, would you like a drink? Uh, we haven't been introduced yet. You're right. I'm Wendy Brown. How do you do? And uh, will you still have a drink? I don't think so. Oh, why not? Because I'm afraid. Wendy, may I assure you there is no fate worse than death. But it's death that I'm afraid of. We'll postpone the drinks. Death in general? Uh, or... Have you ever heard of a man named Harry Morgan? Harry Morgan? Mm. He used to be a pirate by that name. And... Hey, wait a moment. The contemporary Harry Morgan was a crook on a very high plane. That's the one I mean. Well, he's going to kill me. But I thought, if I remember correctly, that he was spending the rest of the 20th century in Guatemala, a point south. Oh, he's coming back to this country. Oh, I see. It was in the newspapers? Oh, no. He, he owes the government lots and lots of money on income taxes. They've been after him for a long time. He wouldn't dare come back openly. Well, then... He's being flown in secretly tomorrow night. It's not been a terribly well-kept secret. But he, he is coming, and, and I'm afraid. Harry Morgan doesn't like you. Huh? Well, he and I, we used to be... That is, we were sort of friends. That sounds comfortable. When he had to leave the country suddenly, he, he asked me to keep some things for him. Things like what? Uh, things like jewelry. And you did? His idea was I would sell the jewels and, and send the money on to him. And you didn't sell the jewels? Oh, I sold them all right, but... But you didn't send him the money. Well, I felt that he... He owed me something. And you collected. Now he's coming back, you're afraid he'll try to collect, huh? Yes, he'll want to hurt me. Simon? Hmm? Do you think I should be hurt? Whenever blondes with, uh, with ideas get closer than a foot from me, I... I stop thinking. It's a family failing. Hmm. I'll go away. Oh, the family disowned me. Wendy, how did you find out about Morgan's returning to this country? Oh, Sammy told me. Sammy being... He's a punch-drunk little prize fighter who spends all his time hanging around bars. His favorite's the Green Star on 3rd Avenue. Which might explain how he picked the news up. Where is Morgan's plane landing? Oh, Sammy didn't tell me that. And that's important for a number of reasons. I think maybe I'll have to find Sammy and have a talk with him. You're going to help me, Simon? Well, I don't believe in blondes being killed. I think it's unconstitutional or something. Besides, uh, Harry Morgan is a bad man, so... Oh, Simon. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. How well, much I'm... If you I'm... can't tell me, better not demonstrate. Not tonight. I've got to find Sammy. Now, you go home, lock your door, and stay behind it. <sighs> All right, Simon. There's less than 24 hours in which to find Sammy, discover where Morgan's landing, and uh, pacify him, if that's the word I mean. Uh, good night, Wendy, and uh, wish me luck. You'll need it. Taxi! Taxi! North to south, east to west, yell for Louie, he'll do the rest. Hello, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Templer. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, would it be too much trouble for you to drive me someplace? Where would you like to go? The Green Star Bar on 3rd Avenue. Okay. Hey, but, uh, but that is, uh, that's a very low-type bar. Sawdust in the floor, so fewer acid in the drink. Well, I'm not going there to drink, Louie. Oh, well, you got a date there? Perhaps. Blonde? I don't know. The name is Sammy. Don't sound like a blonde. Uh, relax, Louie. It's a business date. Sammy, I've been told, is a broken-down prize fighter. 
Oh, I know the guy you mean. He's a lush with cauliflowers. Mm, sounds like an accurate description. Also, he ain't very healthy. I'm sure he's not. However, I hope he lives until we get to him. Hey, Joe. Yes, Sammy. Another shot, huh? Okay. Uh, and uh, leave the bottle sitting there, huh? Uh, take it easy, Sammy. Uh, What's uh, the matter? Uh, you afraid I ain't got the dough? Yeah. Got a load of this. Okay, okay, you got the dough. So leave the bottle. Where'd you get all the folding stuff, Sammy? Uh, I bet you'd like to know. Uh, suit yourself, clam up. Uh, I got it because I'm smart, see? Yeah. I know uh, things. Yeah. Things a few certain parties was very much interested in. A fix on a race? Nah. About another certain party who's arriving in these here United States tomorrow night. Anybody I know? Hey, what's the matter? You think you can make me blabber all over the joint? Okay. Only I wouldn't go around shooting my mouth off if... Now, forget it. The phone keeps yapping all the time. Green Star Bar. Yeah, Sammy's here. Who wants him? Who? Oh. Hey. Hmm. Hung up. Uh, who was it? I don't know. A kind of a whispering voice. Yeah? I, I better get out of here. I better get out of here fast. But, Sammy, what... Save the rest of the bottle for me. <laughs> That's the green star up ahead. Oh, Mr. Templey, see that little guy just coming out? Yeah, I see him. That's Sammy. Oh, wait here, Louie. I want to talk to him. Okay. Then be careful, Mr. Templey. That car! Oh, that was Sammy. Come on, Louie. After him. Come yeah, on. But, but Sammy might need some help. I doubt it. Okay. Oh, come on, Louie. Faster. Yeah. Are you a man or a mouse? I don't know. I squeak easy, then never mind. The car ahead of us got mud on the license plate. I don't think by accident. Hey, hey, they're shooting at us. I ain't insured. What'll happen to my wife and six kids? You don't have a wife and six kids. One thing I'll tell you for sure, if their aim gets any better, I'll never have a wife and six kids. I've been hit. What? Louis, where? In the left rear. The tire. Ah, uh, uh, that's that. Come on. Uh, we may as well go back and see how Sammy is, if he still is. Ambulance ought to be here pretty soon, Mr. Temple. He don't look good, though. No. Sammy. Uh, we couldn't have seen who shot him. We didn't need him. He's something else. Hmm? Sammy. Who were the people you told about, Morgan? Sammy? Girl. Tipped off. Girl. Wendy? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Who else? Couple. Couple of guys. Couple. Who were they? Sammy. Yeah? Where is Morgan being landed? Where is this plane coming in? Don't. No. No, no. Sammy. Goodbye, Sammy. Bartender? Another cop. I beg your pardon. I said another cop. You mind? No, except that I'm not a policeman. You're a bartender, though. You must be a detective. My name is Simon Templer. Templer? You see? Yes. I saw Sammy gunned to death outside this bar a couple of hours ago. Is that so? Yeah, I went down to the hospital with him. They did a quick autopsy. So? Sammy had a lot of money in his pocket. He only had one or two drinks before leaving this bar. I already told the cops that. Yeah, they're terribly grateful. He bought himself a bottle. And didn't finish it. That's why I came back here. You want to finish it? Bartender, 
I think you'd better listen closely. From what I've heard of Sammy, nothing but the fear of death would have driven him away from an unfinished bottle of liquor. Why did he leave the bar? Somebody called up, asked for him. Who? The guy didn't say. He hung up on me. Guy, meaning man? I, I don't know. It was a whisper. You can't tell much from a whisper. Who'd be worried about Harry Morgan's returning to this country? I don't know that neither. And I don't want no part of it. You've though. already bought yourself a part, bartender. You didn't tell the police about that phone call. They didn't ask me. No. Yeah, they'd be unhappy about your coin. No. You wouldn't want them to be unhappy. They could do things about your license and their sorrow. Oh. Who'd be worried about Morgan? I'm talking to myself, you understand? I ain't telling you nothing. Go ahead. I'll eavesdrop. No. Morgan had a girl named Wendy Brown who... Never mind her. I already know about that. Also, he left a nightclub in charge of a couple of guys named Kerrigan and Marlowe. Talk's been going around that Kerrigan and Marlowe ain't been too regular, shipping the gambling receipts to Morgan. I just finished talking to myself. Thank you, bartender. You may have a drink on... Um... On you? No. On Sammy. I'm in Alaska. Saskatchewan, Alaska. And besides, Saskatchewan isn't in Alaska. Simon, you've been drinking. Sure, a bottle of real lemon juice. Lemon juice? Yeah, the weather forecast said rain. An ounce of preventions were... Hey, it is raining out. Now, look, Wendy, why don't you wait until morning? It happens to be 12.30 in the afternoon. I've been robbed. I guess I was up pretty late last Simon, night. Simon, have you seen the papers yet? About... Sammy? No, I did better. I saw Sammy. Oh, Simon, I'm frightened. Well, stay where you are. I'll grab a cab, come over, and we'll be frightened together. Oh, but if you were here, I wouldn't be frightened. Neither would I. But we're not going to be there. We're going to visit a couple of gentlemen, and I probably used the word ill-advisedly, named Kerrigan and Marlowe. Oh, Simon. Now I'm afraid all over again. <laughs> Yeah, it's still raining, Wendy. Hmm. Simon, do we have to? Mm, we have to. I don't get it. Louie, has anybody passed a law recently that you should? I still don't get it. Fella takes a girl to a nightclub. Fine, this I understand. Hooray! But not in the middle of the day. A nightclub is called a nightclub on account of... Louie! Yeah? We've arrived. Oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't recognize the joint in the daytime on account of... I know. It's a nightclub. Wendy? All right. I wait. Hmm, you wait. You've been here before, Wendy? Yes, with Harry. He, um, owns it. Hmm. Tell me, is there any other entrance than this one? Yes, through the alley. Yeah. Let's go that way, then. I, I like alleys. You meet interesting cats in them. Simon. Don't be frightened. Hello. But you... Oh, why, Wendy. Hello, Kerrigan. And I'm Simon. And where are you going with that nice suitcase? Ain't none of your business. And perhaps not. It could be Morgan's business, though, or the police department's. Come on, let's go back in. Look, I, uh, I, I got some dough in here. You can have... No, it might have blood on it. I told you... Don't reach into your pocket to tell me. <laughs> go, a little pistol. I think I'll keep it to remember you by. Come on, you're going back in. All right. The officer's down here. I'll, uh, I'll put the suitcase away. It's tidy of you. Where's your partner? M Marlo? Well, he's around someplace. Uh-huh. Where's Morgan landing, Kerrigan? I don't know. Marlo got the dope from Sammy. You're sure he didn't? Why not ask me, Simon. friend? You would be Marlo. All right, I will ask you. Where is Morgan landing? Guess. Sammy told you then? The punk was dead before I got to him. Oh? Then you've been out looking for him last night, huh? Kerrigan, you know... No, Kerrigan didn't tell me. Doesn't have to now, does he? I think maybe you ought to take a walk, friend. Oh, no, my feet hurt. Huh? More than that's going to hurt me. I'm sorry, uh, I have a gun, too. True, it happens to be Kerrigan's, but then I did leave him his suitcase. Suitcase? Uh, don't pay any attention. What's in it, Kerrigan? Uh, just some clothes. Open her up. I, now, as a matter of fact... I said open her up. 
All right, Marlo. I'll open it. Stay away from that light. Simon, the light. Simon? Simon? Oh, Wendy, let go of me. Simon, no, please, don't leave me, please. Take it easy, Wendy. I think we're alone. Light switch was over this way. Simon, look. Near the door. Yes, correction. We're not alone. Mr. Marlowe is still with us. A very dead Mr. Marlowe. Oh, Kerrigan shot him in the dark. Maybe. Well, you... You said that awfully funny. Did I? Oh, don't forget, Wendy. Kerrigan wasn't the only one here in this room with Marlowe. Simon. Sit down a minute, Wendy. I've got to call the police. And then? Then we'll go back to our cab. Louie must be doing a lot of ticking outside. Oh, Simon, my poor hat. That's ah, just another couple of steps. Oh. Ah, here we are, Wendy. Mm. Well, Louie, did you miss us? What else? <laughs> Welcome home. Well, uh, well, where to? I wish I knew. I, uh... Who made with the with the firecrackers? Yeah, that happens to be the problem, Louie. I don't want to hear about it, because if those were firecrackers, I'm driving a truck. What's wrong with driving a truck? Who said something was wrong? Truck drivers happen to be among the most courteous drivers on the road. Yeah, well, look, Mr. Templer, I got nothing. They're against... always there to help a motorist in trouble. They'll Mr. Templer, go out stop of... already with the truck drivers. I, I know there are wonderful class characters. All of them got PhDs. What happened back there in the club? A man got shot very dead because another man carrying a nice suitcase filled with money not belonging to him didn't want to open the suitcase and let the other man see it. Ask a silly question? But Simon, it, it's getting late, terribly late. Harry Morgan is, is on his way, and I'm... Oh, stop worrying about Morgan. Maybe the whole thing was just a rumor. Oh, it was not. What? I said it was not a rumor about Morgan coming back. Oh? Furthermore, what's been bothering you is where his plane is going to deposit him, no? Yes. So ask me. Louis, I will probably assassinate you. It ain't you. a joke. Ask me. All right. Where is Morgan's plane landing? <clears throat> a private landing field up at Boonchester. Want to know what time it's landing? <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't believe any of this, but what time is it landing? <laughs> Midnight tonight. I'll hate myself in the morning, but tonight I've got to know. Louis, how did you find out? I listened to the radio. <laughs> What time is it, Simon? Uh, oh, ten. How much longer to Boonchester, Louis? Hour and a half, maybe. Uh, we should be in time. Louis, repeat. Huh? The broadcast you listened to. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, the man said Morgan, who has been spending the last couple of years in Guatemala, is returning via private plane to the United States. Sammy was right, When Simon. questioned by correspondents about his wanted for income tax invasion... Mr. Morgan replied he's been in communication with the United States Treasury Department. He's arranged to meet his obligations to them. Uh, Sammy was right, but in that case... Mr. I... Morgan's plane is due to land at Boonchester Airport midnight tonight. A bulletin from a woman's college in the Midwest states that from now on, all women are. All women are what, Louie? How do I know? It's where I turned off the radio because uh... people started shooting guns in the nightclub. Simon, I, I don't understand. If Harry had told reporters he was coming back to this country, if it was even on the radio... Why did Sammy make such a big secret of it? Well, he did have the news earlier than anyone else did. But not earlier enough to make any difference to anyone. Except Sammy. To him, it meant the difference between it's corny, but it's true, between life and death. We're getting close. Hmm, the time is, uh, yeah. A few minutes before 12... Simon. Yes, Wendy? Oh. Well, why do we have to meet Morgan when he lands? Well, he has to know that he can't plan to murder you. But maybe he'll try at the airport. No, that's the only place you can be absolutely sure he'll try nothing. Well, what do you mean? He's coming back to put himself on the right side of the law. Murder's against the law. Oh, he'll find a way. A way to kill me, to kill Kerrigan. Marlowe's already dead. He can't afford to risk anything here, Wendy. Perhaps I can make him realize that the... Hey, uh, this must be the airport. It ain't much. No. It's a private field. It's deserted at the moment. 
The landing lights are on, though. No welcoming committee. Here's the landing strip. I better pull up. Uh. Hmm, well, at least the rain has stopped. Oh, but it's so cold. Yeah, the ground's wet. Now, be mm. careful. Gee, it's like a stage set, Simon. The brilliant lights and then the darkness all around. And the, the emptiness. Oh, it's only a little longer. Simon, listen. Yeah. Hey, that's a plane. It's getting closer. The sky's overcast, Wait a minute. but... A... I-, I can see his lights. Hmm? Oh, yeah. He's angling for a landing. Hey, Louie, stay in the cab. No, okay, Mr. President. Yeah, he's setting her down. Hey, he did a beautiful job. Not very far now. The plane's skidding a bit, but he's got her straightened out. <laughs> Come on, Wendy. Yeah. Mr. Morgan, I presume? You presume right. Hello, Wendy. Uh, hello, Harry. Uh, you mind if we join you? It's a little damp down here. Come on up. All right. Up you go, Wendy. <clears throat> now me. Well, Wendy, they put you on the welcome committee, huh? Harry, don't, don't look at me like that, please. Uh, uh, my name is Templer. Yeah? What are you doing here? I'm insurance. Your what? Wendy's insurance. Against your uh, losing your temper. I never lose my temper. I never lose anything. Uh, how was the weather back in Guatemala? Fine when I took off. Why? Nothing. Anything happen on the flight? No. Uh, it's a very nice plane. It happens to be the best twin motor job built. Yeah, I can believe that. The pilot seat's nice and dry. Floor of the cabin, <laughs> nice and dry. Hey, what cooks with him, Wendy? Does he want to grow up and be a weatherman? Everything's nice and dry, Morgan. Except your shoes. What was that? Your shoes are wet. Hey. Uh, it's company. Let's see who it is. Well, the vanishing Mr. Kerrigan. Come in. My, my, Kerrigan. Carrying a gun like a real big boy. Never mind the gags, Morgan. Sammy's dead, so's Marlowe. That's very sad news you're telling me. Want me to break down and blubber? I'm on the spot for both killings, Morgan. <laughs> That's very sad. Why'd you kill him? I didn't... You might as well save your breath on that one, too, Kerrigan. You see, uh, Morgan's shoes are wet. What, what? It was fine weather in Guatemala when Morgan took off. The plane doesn't leak. He just landed it. Hasn't been off the plane yet. How did he get his shoes wet, huh? Look out! Very nice shooting, Morgan. You got his arm. Very nice shooting indeed. Yeah, even wearing wet shoes. I'll take your gun, Kerrigan. Thank you. You were saying, Templin? There's only one way you could have got your shoes wet, Mr. Morgan. You must have been out in the rain. Yeah? Which means this is your second landing. Simon. Yeah, Mr. Morgan was around New York yesterday and today. Then he got back to his plane, flew around a bit, and landed it all over again. On the schedule he'd given the press. It would have made a nice alibi. Alibi for... The Sammy's murder and Marlowe's. Too bad he got his shoes wet. Yes. Too bad for you, Templar. Sure, I landed here yesterday, went to town, and took care of a couple of things. In other words, Sammy and Marlowe got killed while I was officially flying in from South America. It's a lovely alibi. One of the loveliest alibis I've ever met. <laughs> it's a pity it had to be destroyed. It hasn't been. It's going to stand up after the three of you get yourselves mixed up in a gunfight and knock yourselves off. Think you could get away with it? I can try. What have I got to lose? Your pilot's license at least. What? It... <laughs> uh... oh, Simon, you... You knocked him off. <sighs> so I did. He must have a very weak jaw. Louie, you angel, oh, why I... No, I seen the other guy, you know, one bleeding from the arm, seen him climb into the plane. I didn't know you was expecting him, so I thought maybe I'd come and keep you company, too. And I'm very glad you did, Louie. <laughs> but even the best of parties must come to an end. So, um, Louie, will you phone the police and inform them that Harry Morgan has made his last landing? Simon, 
Norman. Uh, yes, Wendy? You knew, you must have known that Morgan had killed Sammy and Marlowe before we even got to the airport. I did. The wet shoes helped me convince Morgan I knew, but... Wendy, why was Sammy killed? Well, I thought because he'd gone around telling people about Morgan. That's not right, though, is it? No, since we know Morgan had openly announced his return. And Sammy's information would have bolstered Morgan's alibi. But how did Sammy find out about Morgan's return before the newscasters did? How? Huh? Well, I suppose... Oh, Morgan himself. Yeah, it had to be that way. Morgan told Sammy to spread the word around and then killed him before Sammy got too drunk and let the fact slip that he'd seen Morgan a day before Morgan was supposed to arrive. Sammy's only function was to help protect Morgan's alibi and get the three people he was after thoroughly jittery and on the run. Morgan's job would be simpler then. It really was. But how did you know he killed Marlowe? Well, uh, you didn't. No gun. I didn't because, well, because it wouldn't be proper. And Kerrigan didn't because Marlowe had taken his gun, remember? Oh. Gosh, Simon, the way you say it, it all sounds so simple. But it isn't. And I'm grateful and... and... There. Well, that was a nice kiss, but fleeting. Well, in that case... Let's take a little longer, huh? Mm. Mr. Templer. Hey, Mr. Templer, I... <laughs> the saint, huh? <laughs> You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Joan Banks as Wendy and Larry Dobkin as Louie. Paul Fries <clears throat> played Sammy and Ed Max, the bartender. Barney Phillips was Kerrigan and Tony Barrett, Marlowe. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. script of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is now starring in The Winslow Boy at the Las Palmas Theater here in Hollywood. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that The Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Theater Guild on the air tonight stars Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Angela Lansbury, and Cecil Parker in the dramatic triumph, The Voise Inheritance. And in one hour, it's the big show. An hour and a half of the best in comedy, music, and drama with Tallulah as MC. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.